Yeah. yeah. Come on. Here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Spark. I'm Joanne Tabalea Murphy. Our guest today is Karen Mack. She is the founder and director of LA Commons, an organization that engages diverse communities by creating public art. So excited to hear about this. The art tells unique stories um, and promotes uh, a platform for dialogue and for interaction. And Karen, we're just thrilled to have you. Thank you for being on the show. Um, could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Of course, thank you so much for having me. This is wonderful. Um, I am a native of Los Angeles. I love my city. Um, it's uh, incredibly beautiful. Um, we were just talking about the weather and how wonderful that aspect of being in Los Angeles is. But I think what really makes the city uh, are the people. Um, and, you know, we have 200 plus languages spoken and um, an amazing history, um, an amazing present. And I founded LA Commons really as a tool to really bring people together, to uh, use the power of art to build connections between all this diversity and just to celebrate it because, you know, you can really travel the world in Los Angeles without getting on a plane and why not, uh, you know, really uh, highlight all of that and give people opportunities to explore the city and get to know each other and, you know, live um, in a harmony to a certain extent. And we can talk more about the challenges of living in the city later, but, you know, my, my initial spark was that, um, that uh you know celebrating our diversity and um you know creating ways for us to experience it how do you recruit or reach out what does outreach look like when it comes to bringing kids in or students into and what, what is give me an example of what a story might look like when it comes to translating it to art. What does that look like? Okay, well, let me tell you about a great project that we did. Um, the project is called Heart of Hyde Park. It's, it's really an incredible uh, mural that we did on the corner of Slauson and Crenshaw, which is in the heart of the African American community in Hyde Park. Um, and uh, we uh, partnered with an amazing organization. Um, uh, called uh, Hope, um, Hyde Park Organizing Partners for Empowerment. And they, uh, you know, just stepped up. And this is a group of, I mean, this area is very civically engaged anyway, but this is a group of, you know, diehard uh, 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 community members uh, who are, you know, I would say baby boomers. And uh, they, uh, you know, like, took this project on with a vengeance. And so they helped us recruit artists. They helped us recruit the young people, you know, reaching out to their neighbors, uh, reaching out to the local schools um, and helped us find a location in which to create the mural uh, right next door. The mural actually is on a U.S. bank building, which was a feat to even get that done. Um, and so, oh, and they, they brought in speakers to talk about, uh, for example, the African and Latino connection, um, uh, thinking about the Olmecs in, in uh, Mexico who were such, uh, you know, that is a, a, an African lineage that is very clear in the sculptures in Mexico, and that was a, a topic of conversation. So these youth learned so much from their elders. It was quite incredible. And um, the stories that these elders told, uh, for example, the Olmec head made it into the mural. Uh, one of the most poignant stories in that uh, project was the killing of Nipsey Hussle. This mural is located diagonally from the site where he was unfortunately gunned down. Um, and so, and this was just before the mural was to be finished. 
And so the artist, Moses X. Ball, who is a wonderful artist, was really wanting to include him in the mural, because this mural is a depiction of all of the amazing community members from young to old. And so two days before we were to open the mural, uh, we were able to get a connection to Nipsey Hussle's mother, who came to the painting site, saw the artwork, and gave her permission, hand wrote her permission for us to put Nipsey Hussle in the mural. Um, and so the artist worked day and night to get this panel completed so that it can be installed in time for the opening. It was really incredible. And that mural today is a symbol for that community giving tours, uh, you know, before the stay at home order every weekend. Um, and, uh, you know, and which is amazing for us as an organization, cause you know, we kind of facilitate the process, but they've taken, you know, they own it as theirs. So this is our, you know, one of our favorite projects because the community played such an integral role in bringing it to life. And, um, that is our hope because they really identify with this project, look at it as a statement about their their ownership of this place and their stories. And, you know, as, as communities change, uh, people, you know, don't feel a solid connection, but this actually is a touchstone for them to, uh, you know, and everybody who comes to the community to know who uh, this community is about. What about you as a mom and, and you, you know, leading your family too, do you have time for them? and? Do you bring them into your world of art? Well, um, you know, it's interesting that you asked that because when I started LA Commons 20 years ago, this was before I was a mom, I really wanted to align my life with my work. I mean, I felt like work was, I, I mean, I sort of live by the maxim that, um, life is about life it's not about work and so to really make room for life um, by creating a job for myself that really was connected to my passion was really um you know one of the motivating factors for starting la commons besides you know really trying to make a difference in my city and so it's really worked out that way it's been really incredible um when i first started my daughter was born in 2005, so the, or LA Commons was still relatively new. But but and so because of that, you know, I was I was still working out of my house, so I was able to be with her in the early years. We had someone come and watch her, you know, not all the time, but time to time. So that gave me space to do what I needed to do. And then I just took her to all the meetings with me. Um, uh, you know, like I can, I remember being in Nick and Steph's steakhouse with Flora in her stroller <laughs> and, um, you know, just not caring. And luckily my daughter is very mellow. So she didn't, you know, I could take her everywhere. Um, and so that, uh, was you know wonderful i would take her to my kid i was on the city commission i would take her to my commission meetings and and uh galas i took and and she was another thing about her was that she would fall asleep like and just be out no matter what was going on so um <laughs> so it so it it really worked out and um she, you know, she's definitely, I mean, I, I think something seeped in because right now as a 14 year old, she's working on a podcast uh, to rewrite marginalized groups into history. So I'm, I was like, is that genetic? Oh my <laughs> goodness. Wow. So, so she picked up something along the way. And so she, she, we have gone on these study tours too. I told you we featured various countries. So we, have gone to many of the countries and brought artists here from those countries. So we went to South Africa, for example, a couple years ago and she, or last year, I guess it was, and she came with us. She's been able to go on these tours. Um, I actually um, put her in a homeschool, in a hybrid homeschool uh, when she was in the third grade because she, you know, is 
like comes up with all her own projects. So I was like, well, why does she need to be in school? Um, and so <laughs> the great thing about that was um, that it allowed for a lot of independence. So we could go on, on trips and, um, uh, you know, just have a, a really rich learning experience. For example, when she was, I think it was in the fifth grade, she was really into Hamilton. And so, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure you all have experienced that phenomenon where the kids know all the, all the lyrics from that show. And it was, it was incredible. I mean, like how much she learned from, from that, you know, just, learning the lyrics and so we mm -hmm. as part of the homeschool curriculum went on a tour of of hamilton's uh major sites so we went to the dual site we went to philadelphia i mean did i get to go to philadelphia when i was that age um we went to uh wall street i mean it was it was really incredible and because she was in that environment and you know i have this passion for uh, learning about art and history and, um, you know, that kind of thing, it really allowed uh, for this wonderful alignment between work and home. And so uh, it's it's been an, a really incredible, challenging and wonderful journey uh, to build this organization and to, you know, live a life that I designed and that that really uh, you know, supports my passions. Karen, thank you so much for sharing your stories and um, your experiences. You are quite a leader, not just in the art world, but but in your community, um, and and you serve as a, a great inspiration for all of us. We so appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, I want to invite everyone to join us as we look to create the next LA through art and culture and conversation. So uh, I, I am so grateful to be a part of this conversation this morning and uh, wish everybody, you know, good health and the opportunity to be with their families, you know, just take advantage of this time to really live. Um, you know, to experience what life is, is supposed to be like um, while staying healthy and, um, you know, just, just wishing everybody well um, in this challenging time. Support the arts, you all. Thanks to our audience for listening. Don't forget to follow me, um, Joanne Tabalea Murphy, on Twitter and LinkedIn for the latest Spark updates. Thanks for sharing your Spark, Karen. We appreciate you. Thank you.